In this video, we're gonna look at the effects of very speed recording. Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, and in this series of videos, we're looking at the features of 7.1 for Mixbus 32C. So if you're not familiar with very speed, it is a mechanism to essentially slow down your tape, just like you would use on an old eight track or a 24 track or 16 track recorder. The Beatles used it, everyone used it back in the day to get different sounds on their records. And I'm gonna give you some demonstrations on the effects of this very speed sound and how you can use it in your recordings. So if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell so you'll be notified the next time we release future videos. So let's go ahead and look at the screen here. I have a blank mix bus session with a superior drummer loop called up on a track and I also have a guitar track ready to go. So I have my Reverend Six Gun TL with newly updated pickups. These are the DiMarzio Area 61 and 58s, if you're into that kind of information. And we're gonna be getting some stratty sounds through a Saldano Crunch channel. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly go through a few different keys and just show you how changing the tempo using very speed can alter the overall tonality of your track, whether that be a guitar, a bass, or a piano. So let's go ahead and look at guitar one. I'm gonna play a real simple chord progression, which you may recognize or may not. There's no lyrics to this song, so it can be whatever you want it to be. So let's just go ahead and lay down a track and listen to what we got. I'm just gonna use the pre-roll and here we go. One, two, ready, go. works for me. Let's go ahead and bring this loop point out to measure 20. And what we're going to do now is click on the VS button. And that's going to bring up our very speed dialog box. And what we can do is either change the speed by semitones or we can change it by the sense. And we're actually going to slow down the speed by one semitone, which means I'm going to have to play in C sharp instead of D. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. All right, and let's go to our key of C, which I'm gonna start on the A minor chord. And let's bring the semitone down one more half step. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> All right, great. So we got three different takes here, each at a different speed. So now let's listen to the effects of what we have here. So we're gonna open up our dialog box and we're gonna choose playlist one and let's check it out. So I'm gonna start back again, but I'm gonna change it a little bit more quicker. And I want you to notice the change in timbre, which can also mean the overall tonality of the sound. So notice the slower the very speed, the brighter a sound is gonna get as you play it back. So now for example, we're gonna do this in the key of E flat and let's try it out. So I'm gonna start in, on a C chord. 
go to E flat, go to F, and then go to G. Let's turn on very speed and we're gonna go up one semitone. All right, so we're actually gonna play a little bit faster this time. One, two, ready, go. Let's just do one more example. We're gonna do up two semitones. And let's do a new playlist. We're gonna say guitar in E. And here we go. One and two and ready and go. <laughs> Now, taking off very speed allows us to listen back at the regular tempo, but now with the different keys, we're gonna hear how it sounds. So we're gonna go from our original, then go to E flat, then go to E. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so what do we hear there? When you speed up the tape and you play at that tempo, now when you bring it back to the original tempo, your sound is actually gonna be darker versus brighter. So that's just a strange phenomenon, but it's good to know these kind of things as we're recording. All right, so let me now grab the bass guitar and let me put a little riff to this and then we'll add some piano and then we'll be done, okay? All right, so here's my cheap bass. It's a Javier or Xavier. I don't know what you want to call it, but we're just going to lay down a quick part and let's actually play it. Let's speed this up a little bit because I want this to sound really dark. So we're going to leave the very speed at two. I'm going to play it like I'm playing in C sharp, but it's going to sound when we go back to the original key, it's going to sound in B flat and it's actually going to be a little darker in tonality. So here we go. One, two, ready, go. And let's listen back at the regular tempo. So maybe it's a little bit darker, maybe it's a little more growly sounding. You know, there's all kinds of options there. But as you build your track, you can keep these things in mind. Okay, and let's do one more track. We're gonna do piano. All right, now what I'm gonna do for this, let's say you really only like to play in a certain key. And if you're already in the E flat and you're, and you're more comfortable in the key of E or the key of D, you can raise or lower the pitch depending on what key you wanna be in. So that way it makes it a little bit easier for you to play and you just don't have to fool with all the different sharps and flats and all that stuff. So for me, I think I'm going to play in the key of C, which means I'm going to be back in the key of A. So we're actually going to go down two semitones, which also means we're going to play a little bit slower of a tempo and it should be easier for me to play and the key should be easier for me to play as well. One, two, three. Okay. 
I actually messed up a little bit, so I can either choose to redo it just by pressing undo, or let's just make a new playlist. And we're gonna call this new take. And here we go. One, two, three. All right, so we're back at the computer here and let's turn off very speed and let's listen to what we have so far and see if we need to make any changes. Okay. So that's not too bad, but let's go ahead and let's pull up our different playlists. I'm pretty sure I had a better take on take two, but the last part of take three was okay. So let's just see where we need to make the cut. Then I'll copy and paste this over to the take three. All right, so really this section through here could be a little bit better. So I'll copy this, go over to take three, and I'll delete what's already there and I'll paste it in. So now let's listen. All right, that part didn't work either. I'm gonna copy this bar because I can. <laughs> I'm a slosser and a dosser, folks. This is what I do. So listen to what I did right there. It was right here. Actually, I didn't hear it that time. Some kind of note in the guitar or the piano is off a little bit. Maybe it's a guitar. Okay, so let's go to the guitar part. Let's pull up its playlist box and let's just see what happens if we go from here. We're gonna copy that, go to there. And let's delete and paste. You don't have to delete things if you don't want to, but it just kind of keeps things from being layered and keeps everything on its own playlist. So uh, let's listen from here. Nailed it. So let me know guys what you think down in the comments. How would you end up using very speed on your own recordings? And I really want to know. I think it's a fascinating topic. Literally everyone who has recorded all kinds of albums with analog tape have done this kind of method for either singing or playing or just getting different tonalities. So I just think it's really fun to use and I want to know what you think about it. So once again, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe down below and click the bell. And we'll be sure to keep feeding you content every week. So I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, and I'll see you in the next video.